Membero zangu za zove pedo Muchandi shamba za kunge zigo Ticha kudana iku mabiko Ladies and gentlemen, I'm following closely the developments in South Africa after a very tragic incident happened yesterday where over 70 people lost their lives up after a fire broke out in Johannesburg. And earlier on, I shared a video of Lindwe Zulu, a minister in South Africa, a high-level ANC official, where she was refusing, refusing to apportion the blame for that fire on illegal immigrants or foreigners actually of African descent who are actually staying in that place. You know, it is very, very much popular at this time for a politician in South Africa to just blame foreigners. That is a populist notion that will get you votes ahead of the 2024 general elections. But this minister has really stood their ground and decided to go the route of what is right, not what is popular, but what is right. And I define that to be the true essence of a leader. A leader doesn't really have to go by what the people are demanding, but a leader is someone who provides leadership, and a noble leader is someone who will provide leadership in the right direction in what is actually right. And now she's back again, and I'm going to show you this interview, this video, and the context is, it's the government of South Africa, and we very much appreciate the government of South Africa for their hospitality for these immigrants who were actually victims of this fire. And they've provided a temporary shelter for them to be housed, where they will get food, where they will get just a decent shelter for them to spend temporarily so that they don't become also victims in the streets of Johannesburg. So they've provided that shelter, but... What is now happening is there are some immigrants who are worried that since their papers might not be okay or they might not, they might actually be illegal foreigners, they will be deported. And they are worried that after suffering uh, this fire, after being victims of this tragic fire, probably they are going to be deported after they are housed into that shelter. I'm not going to spin die, but if I'm going to over, but over, but it's one more container, you know, but this one now. And the minister is coming to give assurance to them that this is not the issue right now. This is not the priority right now. What we want right now is for us to be Africans. And I just want you to see an example of what is an African. She really shows us, I think, there's something about women. Women, maybe women, they are different. <laughs> Let us just listen to her. NGOs who are already at the, at the shelters where at least they know people are there. Now we've got the foreign nationals who are also here, who are then saying they are very afraid of being uh, deported and all that. And we are saying to them right now, can we be the Africans that we are? Can yes. we deal with the disaster first and foremost that has happened? Can we deal humanely with people, whether they foreign or they, 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 um, they have IDs or don't have IDs? Can we deal first and foremost with the disaster that has befallen them? Can we deal with, what do we do to deal with their immediate needs? And the big question, Minister, uh, the one that I think is not being dealt with now is, will they be deported at these shelters? That's what they want. Well, that's the biggest fear. And yes. maybe give us a, a simpler answer. Once they arrive there, will they then be deported back no, to their No, we country? cannot be dealing with deporting people right now because can we imagine being an African, being uh, in South Africa and being in a place where you thought you were finding shelter for yourself and then there is the disaster that happened and so many lives have been lost. Our first and most important thing is to deal with that disaster even among those who are foreign nationals. We need to know among those who are deceased now, how many of them, how long that's going to take us to find out because it is said some people here are, were burned beyond uh, recognition. That's not what we're going to immediately do. We cannot do that right now because right now we need to deal with the trauma. We need to then also discuss with the embassies where people come from. But a broader picture for me here is more than just being foreigners being in South Africa. Here is an issue. We have Africans across uh, the African continent uh, getting into uh, turbulent seas and trying to cross over to where they think there is a, a, a greener pastures and they perish along the way. 
You've got others who have come to South Africa where they think that there's greener pastures. But what we need to do, let's be humane for now and begin to deal with the, 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 the pain, let's deal with the, the, the stress, let's deal with the trauma which with people, because it's not easy for people to be falling from the third floor, fourth floor, right down, it means there was trauma. Right now, let's deal with their problems first. And how do you convince these uh, Malawans to go now, Minister? There are already Malawans who are at the shelters as we speak. I saw people at the shelter, not only from Malawi, at the shelter we found people from different countries. They are there and I can, I'm sure some of them were that they were being recorded and all. Some of them didn't have IDs and of course some of them are going to say I had my permit in there and my permit got burnt and all that. We need to be able to give them that assurance that right now what we are dealing with is the humaneness of South Africa and a government that is responsible. Let's deal with the trauma. And the police are, are, are trying to say to them, whatever you had in the building is going to be secured for now. We can't have them being on the street forever. And we are saying to them, nobody's going to be deporting them uh, when they get to the shelter. At the shelter, we are looking at the trauma. We are looking at what we can do to help them. These are women for me. For us as a Department of Social Development, the worst thing is to see women who are prepared to sleep out on the streets. We know what the issue is for us in South Africa of gender-based violence and all that and harassment. So we have to take our time and engage with them until we convince them to go. We convinced some in the morning, by the way. They did go and they are there. Nobody has deported them. They are still at the shelter. Okay. Thank you. Minister, let me let you go. We've got a lot of convincing to do is Minister Lindy Wezulu, the Social Development Minister, uh, as she tries now to convince uh, the former tenants of the building, of course, that was engulfed in flames. We know the majority of them coming from Malawi. It's going to be difficult convincing myself as they've made it uh, quite clear that they won't be going uh, anywhere. They're saying that their belongings are inside that building, but what they fear the most is being deported once they arrive uh, in these shelters. In fact, I'm not sure if we can take a listen. It, it, it's going to be an interesting conversation. I'm going to put my mic there so we can have a listen to what's happening. The, the ones who have the children and the children are in uniform and they have to go to school. But why is it that you, are, you don't want to go to the shelter? Maybe let me understand that because we have shelters that have been kept for you. I went to the shelter. I found those who agreed to go to the shelter. They have already a place to stay. They have um, uh, social workers who are already there. They have the blankets, the sponge, and they also even have the food that is being distributed for, for, for them there. What I don't understand is how long you think you are going to be out on the street, especially with children? Because let me also tell you, the police are not going to allow you to go into the building. They have made it very clear to us that nobody will be allowed to the, go to the building and it will take a long time for them to allow even the things that are in there to be taken out. So my plea to you is, we cannot in South Africa be saying to you, just sleep here on the street. The reason why we've given you the shelter is because we want you to be safe. Irrespective of where you come from, you have to be safe. But like me, I have a two kids, yes. you see. So she was in the school, you understand. Then I was waiting, she must come back to school. Now she came back, but she's gone to my friend, that another sister there. She went to his house. It's only me, I'm here. You are waiting to go to the shelter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this with you, we are done. You are going to the shelter? Yes. I, I would like to say to you, for you, all of you who understand at least, the women in particular, we would like to see them in the shelter because we want to make sure that we are protected. Number two, we also want to make sure that your needs are taken care of for now until there is alternative. But now we will get blanketed there. I'm from the shelter, my sister. I, we, have, we have mattresses, we've got blankets, we've got ablution facilities, which means the bathroom and the place where you can shower. 
I asked them when I was there that they must clean the kitchen. I also asked the men who are there because you must be separated. The men must be on the other side. The women must be on the other side. I, uh, the women who went there, they were cleaning this morning. So it means they are even staying. The people who had not cleaned the place were the men. I asked them to go in there and clean the place. So if you can go to the shelter, uh, because you, you will, your names, your numbers and everything will be written. Myself and the MEC of Social Development Local, the local uh, government, as well as my department. You see, she was here. Yeah, Since know, morning, she has been here. Way. Because we want your safety. Your safety is number one for us. All the other issues we'll deal with later. I like me, I will go there because okay. I don't know where can I go. Only my kids is safe where she is. Okay. You see, but like myself, I will go there okay. to sleep there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ubuntu in practice, Ubuntu in action. And the minister there, Linda Wesulu, has actually shown us the other side of South Africa, which a lot of you were not privy to. I know that a lot of people, they stereotype South Africans to be xenophobic, South Africans to be violent and unwelcoming to foreigners. But if that was the case, you wouldn't be seeing a lot of foreigners, the number of foreigners that you are seeing in South Africa today. The reason why you have got that big number of foreigners in South Africa is because the majority of them, they are actually welcoming. The majority of them, they are actually receptive to people of other nationalities. And this minister here, Lindwe Zulu, is actually showing you or proving you, proving to you, or putting it into practice that South Africans and the South African government at large, they are very much welcoming to people of other national descent. Yeah, this is something which is commendable, and this is something that we would like to see all over Africa, no discrimination on the basis of uh, nationality and illegality, legality or illegality. Because you would say in issues of this national disaster, someone would expect that only South Africans or those who are documented, foreigners who are documented would get assistance. But here you are seeing that both they are not even being asked whether they are legal or not legal. They are just provided the shelter and assured again and again that they are not going to be deported. Of course, as of now, we are sure that as of now, they are not going to be deported. What is important right now is that they get the assistance that is true. The, 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 the assistance that you would give a, a fellow South African if you are a South African minister. And I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, but this is commendable. This is true Pan-Africanism, not just the Pan-Africanism that we see from those Pan-Africanists who will be just talking. This is Pan-Africanism in action. This is Ubuntu in action. Yeah. How many of you agree with me? How many of you agree with me? If you agree with me, kindly share this video to as many people as possible. My hope is that some African leaders in Africa will get to see this video and change their mindset on how they deal with foreigners, how they deal with foreigners. Ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think about this in the comment section. And with that, I am out.